Hello students. How are you all? I hope you all are doing well. I welcome you to yet another session of class 6 science. Today we are going to start a new chapter that is sorting of material into groups. I have divided the chapter into two parts. So first we will start with part number 1. And in this part we are going to cover the following contents. Objects around us, sorting of objects, classification of objects as living and non-living, what are materials. Before we start the chapter, I want to ask you a question. As you can see, there are two closets in the given picture. And if I ask you to find something from the closets, which closet will be easy for you to find the thing? I think your answer will be the closet on the right hand side. Yes, and it is because the closet is well organized. The t-shirts are placed properly in one place. The shirts are placed properly in a place. The trousers are placed nicely. The shoes are arranged in their racks. And uh, hankies are arranged in boxes. Whereas the closet on your left hand side is quite messy. Isn't it students? So we always sort the objects accordingly or on the basis of some characteristics so that finding them becomes easy. In your houses also, I know you all are good children and you must be arranging things nicely. Let it be your bookshelf also. So moving forward, let us know what is the meaning of sorting of materials. The classification of various objects into groups on the basis of their characteristic properties is called sorting of material into groups. Yet another example as you can see in the given picture, it is the picture of a kitchen where things are nicely arranged, the pulses are kept at a place, the spices are arranged nicely in a rack, the different types of oils are arranged in a place, the snacks are arranged in yet another place. So things become easy, I know all your mothers also do this in their own kitchen. And even if in their absence, you people can find the things easily. Moving forward, let me tell you, the things or objects are basically classified into two categories, that is living and non-living. The living objects are further classified as plants and animals, whereas non-living objects are classified on the basis of nature of the materials. Now I know that all of you know what are living and non-living objects and how we can classify them. As you can see in the picture there are certain examples of living things like cat, dog, tree, flowers, fish, children, butterfly. Now if I ask you what are the characteristic properties of living objects then I know your answer will be they need food, they respire, they uh, move and they reproduce. Isn't it students? Yeah, you are correct. And if I ask you what are the characteristic properties of non-living things like a pencil, a glass, a robot, a radio, a stone or a pillow then you will tell me that they cannot move, they don't need food, they do not respire, neither do they reproduce. Am I correct? Yes, even you are correct, you are thinking correct. So living things characteristics are differentiated from non-living things characteristics. Now, what are materials? A material is a physical substance used to make things. Metals, plastics, ceramics, glass, fibers are some of the main categories of materials. If we look around, everything we see is made from a material, sometimes more than one. 
yes you heard it correct some of the objects are made from more than one material let me tell you how here is an example as you can see the object here is a pencil and it is made up of various materials like rubber metal wood graphite etc so one object is made out of various types of material so a material is what an object is made up of examples of materials are wood plastic metals fabrics and so on let me give you some more examples here as you can see there is a list of objects on your left hand side and the list of materials out of which they are made in the left right hand side so for example a book a book is made out of paper a tumbler is made out of glass or plastic a chair is made out of wood a toy is made from wood or plastic shoes are generally made out of leather so these are objects and they are made out of certain type of materials whatever objects that you see around you are made out of some of the other material so with this this session ends and i hope the basic concepts of this chapter are clear to you in the next session we will be studying about properties of materials till then take care thank you